we're back again with Mark. Terribly sorry for if technology is just the greatest. <laughs> <laughs> but I believe we left off at what um, character you portrayed, and you were telling me about the Nazi character that you portrayed as. Would you like to go back into that? Sure. <clears throat> so there's two characters. You'd ask me, you know, some of the most powerful characters, the characters I enjoyed the most. Um, one was this Nazi SS officer that was super intense. It was, uh, it, it was by far the most intense character I've ever played. But when I saw the film, the, the film was so beautiful. Um, it just, it made it worth it. And, you know, my, I play a lot of villains. I play a lot of people who do very bad things. And I look at it as my job to make my villains as powerful and as compelling as possible to give the hero something huge to overcome so that when they defeat me, because they always do, it makes the hero stronger and better and it makes the victory more wonderful. So Leah Shawcat was playing the, the hero of the movie. She, she's the one who's saving the, you know, attempting to save these, these children that I'm hunting down. And, um, you know, I'd watched Alia Shawcat in uh, uh, Arrested Development since she was a little girl. So, you know, I'm a huge fan of hers. So we get on set and she wouldn't talk to me because, you know, I get it because I'm playing this horrible <laughs> Nazi. After we finished, you know, finished filming, she was very, very sweet, very nice. But um, but it's one of those characters that, you know, it was hard to play, but it was very, um, it was very fulfilling. And another character that I that I play that, that it's a tiny tiny little role in the movie, but it had such a huge impact on my career. I'd done a film called Free State of Jones that was directed by Gary Ross, starred Matthew McConaughey, and I play a, a, a racist character who's in one scene in this movie. And I show up on set and realize that the actor I'm playing opposite is Mahershala Ali, uh, who's won. You know, a number of Academy Awards, you know, mm -hmm. he's amazing. But this was prior to that, right? This is when his, he'd already been on House of Cards, which is where I knew him from. I just remember he was my favorite actor in House of Cards. So I show up and the, the movie set during the Civil War and just after. He plays a recently freed slave and I play a horrible racist who literally chases him down, has this major interaction, and then I kill him right and i have to say the most horrible atrocious things that a white man can possibly say to a black man i mean it's just terrible right so maharshala sees that i am struggling to do this right i mean it's just hard for the words to even come out of my mouth and so he takes me to the side and he puts his arm around me he says mark your job is to bring this character to life to help tell the story your job is not to judge this character He's like, do your job. And he took that weight off my shoulders, right? And I then spent the next eight hours doing the scene with him, again, saying horrible things. The director, Gary Ross, at one point came up and said, all right, let's improv now. And I'm like, are you serious? I have to improv this scenario? It was horrible. But I did it. And I remember at the end of the day, Marshall calls me aside. He gives me this long hug. And he said, you did your job today. And it just hit me. This is this was one of the first things I ever booked. This was right after T-shirt guy. And it hit me that my job as an actor, I'm just an assistant storyteller, right? Mm -hmm. I am not there to judge characters. I am there to bring characters to life to make this world real and powerful and compelling. And um, he he showed me that one day. That's what I'm there for. And he took the weight off of me because I do. I play a lot of really horrible, horrible, horrible humans. But he let me know that's okay, right? Because we need horrible humans to tell amazing stories. And what I often say is, you know, you need this, you need, you know, Judas to tell the story of Jesus. You know, you need Hans to tell the story of, of uh, uh, John Mc McClain. Um, you need really good bad guys to tell the story of really good, good guys. So, those two stand stand out a lot. Now I'll say from uh, you know just having fun. Uh, I, I did a TV show that's coming out next month on Apple TV called Manhunt. It's uh, 
It's about the hunt for John Wilkes Booth after he killed Lincoln. And I play the man who hunts down and kills Booth. And this character, obviously, based on a real guy, and the guy was so interesting um, that I had so much fun getting into the the mindset of this of this character. And because there's a ton of horse riding in the in this show, they sent me to like horse riding camp for weeks to you know prepare for the prepare for the TV show. That one was a, was a lot of fun. Um, and then, you know, I've got so many wonderful experiences. I feel like I'm luckier than I deserve to be, but I've, I've been able to work with almost all of my childhood idols. You know, like I love Tom Cruise as a kid. And I remember doing that film with him. Horse riding camp for weeks. I'm sitting next to him in a plane because he flew in every scene that he's flying. That one's a, and was we're a taking lot of fun. And I remember um, looking over and thinking, and then you know, if you had told so eight year old Mark, I feel like I'm next to Tom Cruise as he flies a plane. I'm like, you're crazy, I've been able right? to work with almost. And then I did a, I did a, a part idols. on Cobra Kai. You know, like, and I again, Tom Cruise little as a boy kid. me. And I remember uh, the karate kid. Film with him. Horse and, and the idea that I was one day going to be flu standing opposite Daniel, the you know, karate kid, and, and getting a fight with him like that. You know, and then I just you know, if you told me I love like Nicholas Cage as a kid, and I got to work with this film playing his sidekick, and I've just been so fortunate to work with people that the little boy me, the karate kid, and the idea that I was one day would never be standing opposite him about to get a chance to stand opposite him. And, and, and act with them like that. You know, so just, it's you really know, hard for me to narrow down the roles that I've been playing. I'm playing him as a side kick. And I just, you know, I think a lot of times it's like what I did most recently. You know, it's kind of what I love the most. I just finished a film in Atlanta. I play the lead in the film. And I play a guy who's on death row. Literally, the movie's called The Final Hour. And it's the last hour before he's going to be put to death. And interesting. Kick and Again, I played a lot of bad you know, I think it's a lot of times. So this like is the I first time that I played bad you know, kind of what I love the most. Who had done yeah, something for about 15 years ago, and, um, and, and, and now he regrets what he's done. He's looking for redemption. So they needed, so they needed someone to bring out that stuff. And people believe, okay, this guy could kill a family. He's probably to believe that. But being able to like dive into a guy who knows that what he did was horrible and is looking for redemption, like that was a really uh, I mean, it was hard, man. It, it was the hardest shoot I've ever done with the most amazing people. Um, but that one was a lot of fun, you know? And it was it was uh, like 80% of the film is me and a guy named Manny Perez, an amazing actor out of New York, uh, in a jail cell. I mean, it's as simple as you can get as far as a film goes, but um, it was it was intense. Wow, that is absolutely incredible. So your brand is an actor. Are you essentially the villain brand? What is your brand as an actor? Well, you know, I never fully give my brand because, uh, you know, I think it should be some mystery. But what I'll say is this. My take on branding is it's what people feel in their gut who don't know you when you mm -hmm. walk out, right? Because generally speaking, until you're famous, when I'm auditioning for directors and producers, they don't know who I am. When people are watching me on a TV show or film, they don't know who I am. What they know is what I give off on camera. So I had to figure out what that was. And what I've learned is I give off an energy that some of it's true. Like, you know, one of my branding words is intense. And I understand I'm pretty intense, right? I mean, people like that or they don't like it, but it's just kind of, it is what it is, right? Um, but also some of my branding is, is violent. I'm not violent, you know? Uh, unpredictable, dark. Um, so basically if I'm going to play, I can play a lot of different types of characters that are broader than villain, but if I'm playing a cop, I'm going to play a cop that's got a very dark edge to him. You know, he's going to, he's going to, the most I'm ever going to do is anti-hero. It's unlikely I'm going to play straight up good guy. I'm never going to play a Captain America, right? I'm just, that's not the energy guy I give off. If I'm going to play a good guy. It's going to be a good guy with some very uh, dark edges. Wow. And honestly, I've seen some of your work and you truly are a, a magnificent actor. And I know that you do some acting training and you actually coach as well. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little bit more about how someone that is a newbie 
could get into acting and be in the same position as you, they move out to mm -hmm. California. What is, what is their next step? Well, you know, it's funny. I actually talked to a young man earlier today that uh, an actor friend of mine connected us today. You need to talk to Mark for, you know, some, some guidance. And very nice guy. A couple of big picture ideas. Number one, acting is easy, right? People make it sound like acting is hard. It mm -hmm. is not. All of us at seven years old play made believe, right? All of us. And I think the key as an actor, as an adult, is to learn to get back to that playful mindset where you're not worried about being judged. You're not worried about what people think about you. You're not worried about making a fool out of yourself. It's just, you just disappear into the scene and bring your magic, right? So a couple key things. Number one, you don't have to move to California. I actually think it's a very bad idea to move to California now. With self-tapes, you can live anywhere and reach the highest levels as an actor. Um, okay. LA has 2 million people there pursuing acting. Atlanta, to use an example, has more films and TV shows being shot than LA. Yet there's maybe, maybe 10,000 people in the Southeast pursuing acting, you know? Chicago has 10, 20,000 people pursuing Hello? I'm sorry, I believe you froze again. Mark, can you hear me? Terribly sorry, everyone. Um, we are still having some technical difficulties, but we would love to have you guys back and hopefully we can get this sorted out. I do believe he should be joining us again shortly, um, but please stay tuned. Mark? Ev evidently the gremlins are uh, can you hear me <laughs> i can hear you now i i can't see you though there we there go, we go. <laughs> I'm not sure what's going on tonight this is crazy you know i do live in a haunted house and i do every once i have weird things happen this may be one of them i don't know uh, <laughs> oh wow but uh so we might yeah, be dealing with some ghosts <laughs> might be dealing with two ghosts uh but yeah i, I think that actors shouldn't move to LA. They should mm -hmm. stay wherever they are. Uh, the biggest thing is be very discerning of who you take advice from. Um, when I got started as an actor, I took advice from people who were really, really confident, but they had no booked jobs to back up that confidence. And I followed their advice and I wasted years. So I tell people, if you're online and you're watching YouTube videos or you're on Instagram and, you know, you're watching people talk about acting, look them up on IMDb Pro. And if you're going to pursue acting, you should have an IMDb Pro account. See if they're booking professional jobs. If they're not, ignore their advice, right? It's the craziest thing. Like I see so many people, I think of acting as like a mountain, right? We want to get to the top of the mountain. Yes. Most people are standing at the bottom of the mountain and they're taking advice from other people at the bottom of the mountain. That's just insane. Like I, what I always do is look up the mountain and say, Hey, Mary or John, how do I get where you're at? And then they give me advice and I get to where they're at now. Now I say you, no one can tell you how to get higher up the mountain than where they're at. Cause if they knew how to get there, they would be there. Right. So number one is stop taking people's advice just because they give it. Like there was, there was someone I knew on online who was constantly posting videos 
giving actor advice. Now, this person had never booked a professional acting job and the advice they were giving was stupid. So I literally reached out to them and said, you need to stop posting these videos because you're misleading actors. You don't, you don't have any experience and you're presenting yourself as if you do and you're misguiding actors. And this person got very upset and of course they blocked me. But, you know, it's, it is easy nowadays to look actors up and see, are they booking jobs? Because if they're booking jobs, that means something they're doing is working. You always tell people, I, you know, I do a little plumbing at my house. I am not a plumber, right? I have no idea how to be a plumber. You should get advice from a plumber if you want to be a plumber, right? I'm not a plumber. So that'd be the other thing. Um, the next thing is, is focus on the business of acting. I know actors who've been pursuing acting for 20 years and they take acting class after acting class after acting class, learning for the, looking for the secret on how to book jobs. There's no secret, right? The secret is bring your unique, wonderful magic to every role. Understand what it is that you bring that's special, which is your brand. Market that special thing to all the people that can buy your product. You know, cast writers, directors, producers, network, studios, whatever. When you book a job, probably going to be a tiny job when you first start, show up and do the best job you can do and be the easiest guy in the world to work with. Don't want to work with you again, right? It's a simple process. Stay positive, you know, understand there's, you're going to mess up. You're going to make mistakes. You're going to fail over and over and over. And it's part of the process. You know, whenever I walk onto a film set, like the one I just finished in Atlanta, when I walk on that film set the first day, I never think I'm the best actor on this set because probably I'm not, right? There's a lot of amazing actors out there. But what I do think is I'm going to be the least pain in the ass of any actor on this set because I know I can deliver that, right? I can be easy, professional, know my lines, not be a diva, just mm -hmm. everyone do their job. Like I look at my job is to make other people able to do their job easily so that when the film is over and my, my name comes up, they're like, that guy was easy to work with. Let's work with him again. Right? So it's just basic stuff. I mean, again, it's no different than if you're running a pizza restaurant or a t-shirt shop, it's the same basic idea. So what I tell people, learn how to act. It ain't that hard. Learn the, you know, the techniques to work on camera and how to do on-camera auditions. Learn it from people who are booking auditions, though. Um, and then go learn about business. Read books on marketing. Read books on uh, mindset. Read books on, on how to you know, engage in guerrilla marketing because you have to be a business to be successful long-term. So there's kind of my big, my big picture. I mean, I teach a 20-hour class on how to be a working actor, it obviously goes into intense detail, but that's really what it boils down to, those things. Mm -hmm. That's, honestly, that's the best advice I've heard in a long time. Thank you so much for portraying that. And I know that you have also have a production company as well. Yes. Do you use some of this advice into your business? for your young actors that may be coming into the business that you see walking in and out of your production company's doors. And you've also made a movie with your production company. And I would love to hear more about Savannah Haunting as well. Sure. Yeah, I, you know, obviously once I'm working with the young actors, they've already gotten agents, they've gotten the audition. They, they're, they've they gone through a lot of hurdles already before they get to me. So by the time they get to me, generally, they don't need a lot of advice on what to do. You know what I mean? Like, cause they're, they're already on set, but, uh, but I do give a lot of advice. You know, when I coach young kids, uh, I also coach their parents because as, as a director, mm -hmm. anyone who's under 18, you're not just hiring the actor. You're also hiring their parents. That's a, that's a combination. And some parents are very easy to work with and some parents are not. And so I, I work a lot with parents to help them understand when your kid is being auditioned or is working a project, you reflect on them. So you have to understand that and keep that in mind. And the other thing too is teaching. I, I see this so often with a lot of moms. A young actor will come to me who's seven, eight, nine, ten 10 years old. And I'll ask them a question and mom will answer. 
And I always say the same thing, mom, stop. Because when he or she walks into that callback, they have to answer the questions. When they're on set, they have to answer the questions. You're not answering the questions for them, so don't do it now. Get them in the habit of like listening, paying attention, and, ha and having the strength and the fortitude to answer questions from adults, right? Um, but, uh, you know, as far as the production company, everything that I use in the acting world, which is, you know, make mistakes, but never make the same mistakes twice, right? I always say I make lots of mistakes, everything I do, I learn from those mistakes and I just don't make them again. Um, be easy to work with, you know, be a professional, um, you know, lead by example. You know, if you're on, if, as a production company, when I'm on set, I'm directing, producing, whatever, uh, nobody's going to outwork me. You know, like my, my producing partner, Alexis Nelson, no one will outwork her. Um, so we're definitely not those types who like, we're getting the lattes while everyone else is, you know, busting their butt. Like we're there busting our butt too. Um, but we did a movie called a Savannah haunting that, uh, it's, it is inspired by true events that happened in my house. And hopefully the things in my house don't affect our, uh, our interview again. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, uh, my producing partner had come to visit me in Savannah. When I first came back here, I'd come back for some family reasons and I didn't intend to stay. And so she was coming back just to give me, uh, you know, moral support. And she was staying in one of the upstairs bedrooms. It's actually just right over here to the side. And uh, she had a horrible, terrifying experience. And she comes down the next morning. She's freaked out. And uh, she tells me, hey, you need to write a script based on what's happened to you and the family. And so that's what we did. So the movie's interesting because we open it and close it with real interviews from the people who lived in the house, the experience, the haunting, uh, and a couple of uh, paranormal experts. The final shot in the end credits of the movie is real security cam footage from my house. And what's interesting, me and my business partner had argued about what, because I, I used to have cameras all around my house, and they picked up some pretty scary stuff. And uh, the thing that we put, I won't give it away, but the, the footage we use in the movie is pretty scary. But there's another shot I have that is absolutely terrifying. And my partner was just like, that's just too much. Like, we can't use it. It's just too much. Uh, so I didn't end up putting it in the movie. But the uh, the story, the characters in the story are all made up. But the things that happened to them really happened to the to the people in the house. And also, like, there are things that I thought I made up, like, Part of the story is there was a house here that burned down during the Civil War, and then my house was built over the property. I just made that up. Well, we were doing a documentary about the haunting after we finished filming, brought in an expert who looked up the history, and I found out this was a plantation, and the plantation house burned down during the Civil War, and my house was built over it, and I had no idea. So it's oh kind of crazy. Uh, but uh, but it's a, you know, it's a, I think it's a good movie. It's it's a creepy movie, but it's not a jump scare movie. It's not meant to be. The thing I'm so proud of, though, we won numerous Best Film Awards at film festivals that weren't horror festivals. Our lead actress won a bunch of Best Actress Awards. We, we had a bunch of Best Supporting Actress Awards. Um, I'm very proud of the fact that we made a horror film with really good acting. I think a compelling story that's, that's, that resonates. Um, you could watch the movie... And um, the movie, if you took out the supernatural elements, it could be a really powerful movie about a family falling apart because of a tragedy, right? So, yeah, I'm really proud of it. Uh, I went to see a doctor today, and he happened to have seen the movie last night, which was kind of fun. Uh, I always love hearing feedback from folks. So so I say, if, if you guys watch the movie uh, mm -hmm. and you like it, post wonderful reviews. If you watch the movie and you don't like it, don't post reviews. Feel free to send them to me private. <laughs> I definitely have to watch it. Honestly, I have heard so much about it and I just haven't gotten to see it yet, but I would love to go and watch it if by any chance, where can I watch it at? It is everywhere. It's on Amazon, <laughs> Google Play, Tubi. Uh, there's so many. I mean, it's on any of the outlets that are where you can rent it. Uh, 
and it's on Tubi, which you don't have to rent it, but you have to sit through commercials. Um, so yeah, so it's easy to find. If you just Google it, it's easy to find. I definitely love your feedback if uh, if you check it out. I would, I'm absolutely going to tell you all about it. And I do have to end this up really quick, wrap this up really quick. But if you would love to cover up with the audience, what are your final, what's your final advice that you would love to give us? I think the most important thing in life, figure out what it is you're passionate about, what you love doing, and then go do it. I don't care how much it pays. I don't care how many people tell you you can't do it. I don't care how hard it is to do. Start pursuing it. And at the end, of, I can promise you life will be amazing. I don't care how much money you ever make. If you're pursuing your passion, you will be happy. Do it. Start tomorrow. Just do it. Beautiful, beautiful sentiment. I honestly, a lot of people don't realize that nowadays that you can make a career out of what you love. Absolutely. And to see a man who has accomplished it and is doing absolutely incredible while doing it is truly an inspiration. Thank you so much for being on here today. And I hope to hear more and see more from you in the future. But thank you, everyone, tonight. And thank you so much, so much, Mark, for being our guest for tonight. I appreciate you so much, my friend. And I wish you much continued success. Thank you for being on for tonight's Unfilter with Brady. And I hope to see you in the next upcoming weeks. And everyone else, please tune in next week for our continuation with Antonio McKay where we will finish this interview and we will have a great time doing it. Good night, everyone. And good night, Mark. Thank you so much again.